So today I'm going to be reviewing a laptop that I just picked up. This is a newer laptop, I think came out in 2021, and the interesting thing about it and why I bought it, this was the sole reason I bought it, was because it had an ARM processor in it, which is something I didn't even realize they were making for Windows uh, laptops. Uh, so I bought it for just that sole reason because I wanted to see how it performed and I was very interested and I got it for a really good price and we'll go over that in a little bit. But first off, I want to discuss what an ARM processor is because they're brand new to the Windows platform. Now, ARM has been around for quite a while. It's actually the name of the company that created it. Um, the company was created in about like the 80s. Uh, but anyways, ARM chips can be found in most devices that you use daily. Um, some examples of these are Android phones, Fire TVs, Roku, Smart TVs, Amazon Alexas. Basically, any device that has a CPU that isn't big enough to put a fan in it is what it, it uses ARM chips. Um, and even like older iPhones use ARM chips as well. Now, the reason you see these processors in so many devices is because they generate very little heat. They generate about 15 times less heat than a standard Intel or AMD CPU that you'll find in desktops, laptops, or gaming consoles. Now, the reason they generate so little heat is because of the way they handle instructions. So let's say you give an Intel CPU and an ARM CPU the same list of 100 tasks. The Intel CPU will start all the tasks at the same time, while the ARM CPU starts with the first task, task and doesn't move on to the next one until the first task is completed. Now, obviously in computing, it's much quicker to do all the tasks at once, but the downside is that, the, is that a lot more heat is created. Now, this is fine for laptops and computers and consoles because they have cooling systems built in, such as a fan. But for small devices such as smartphones and even fire TVs, a fan really isn't possible. Therefore, the ARM system works amazing for those. Now, ARM chips can also be designed specifically for each device that it's put in, so it can be much more efficient when running tasks. This is called Systems on a Chip, or SOC for short. Anyway, that's a very quick rundown of what an ARM CPU is. You can read about them for hours, so I won't get too technical with it. Anyway, the question here is how well does an ARM CPU run Windows? Now, it's already very well known that in the past, when many laptops and desktops still shipped with hard drives, these CPUs would struggle to run Windows fluidly. Now, nowadays, solid-state drives are being shipped in even the lowest-end PCs and laptops, so this helps everything run a lot better. Now, let's go over the specs of this system. This is a 14-inch screen that apparently is 1920 by 1080p. When I bought it, it said it was 1366 by 768 uh, so I don't know if it's like upscaling or something, or it actually is 1080p, but it, it said it wasn't 1080p, but it does 1080p, so I'm not sure. Um, I'm just going to say it's a 1080p display. It doesn't really look that good for a 1080p display, but anyways, who cares? Um, the, the CPU used in here is a Snapdragon um, SC Gen 2. It's an 8-core processor clocked at 2.55 gigahertz. Uh, the turbo is also 2.55 gigahertz. Now, this laptop has no fans cooling the internals, and because of that, it's super thin. And then this specific model, and I think the only uh, specs you can get for this model before upgrading to the higher-end one is a 4 gigabyte is 4 gigabytes of RAM, and then a 128 gigabyte uh, SSD. I don't know if it's NVMe or just a standard SSD. I didn't open it up to look at it, um, but it could be either one. I'm not sure. Now, the price of this computer uh, varies depending on where you get it and how you buy it. Uh, the standard retail price for this thing that you can find um, on the Samsung website or Best Buy or Amazon is about 300 to 350 Now, you can find them open box at Best Buy or Amazon pretty frequently for 270 Now, here's the big reason why I bought this. When I was standing in Best Buy looking at it, because I didn't go in there to look at this computer, I just happened to see it. I went on Amazon, and I saw that they had an open box for only 180 bucks, And I was like, 180 bucks? I'll do it. Because I was just I was just intrigued. I wanted to see how run how well it would run. So I bought it for only 180. If you can get it for that price, it's much more recommended, but either way, even if I was given this thing for free, I really wouldn't have much use for it, and we'll go over why I really don't have much use for this computer. But also, this computer is not marketed towards me. It's marketed towards uh, apparently students, but I would say even students shouldn't really buy this thing. And we'll get into that later on in the video. Now let's talk about the best quality of this computer, and that's the build quality. Now, the build quality of this laptop, given the price point, is top tier in my opinion. Just looking at it, you could believe it's a $1,000 laptop. 
The top shell is made of plastic, but the finish on it makes it look like metal. And if you don't think about it too much, you might even think it's metal when you hold it. Now, the bottom side, however, looks and feels like cheap plastic, but it's on the bottom, so that's not really a big deal. The Chiclet keyboard on here feels really good, and it looks much higher quality than it really is. But the trackpad here could use some work, as it's not always very responsive. Now, this could just be an issue with my unit, as I've only tested this single unit. Uh, but I've noticed that sometimes when you're consistently dragging across the screen, it gets caught up and you need to lift your finger off and set it back down for it to figure out what it's doing. So again, that could be an issue with only my unit, but it is quite annoying. Now let's move on to the screen. Um, I'm not a fan of this screen at all, but given the price point of this computer, it's not really bad. Generally in this price range, you won't be getting a very good screen, so I would say it's standard quality given the price range. However, it's very dim, and it looks washed out 100% of the time. Like, nothing really looks good on this display. Um, and also on top of that, it strained my eyes. My eyes started hurting after looking at it for only like 10 minutes, so... I'm not a fan of the screen. Now let's move on to speed. Now speed is a very interesting category for this computer given the ARM processor. Um, I would say it runs pretty fluidly when you're just doing basic internet searches and going on websites and looking through articles and it works fine when using like uh, Microsoft Word or something like that. Um, YouTube is a different thing. It doesn't run YouTube particularly well. Uh, I was able to actually watch a video in 4K, but it got pretty choppy. Uh, 1080p is probably the max you'd want to watch a video on on this computer. Um, YouTube itself was, wasn't very fluid, um, and just video viewing in general wasn't super fluid. It, it runs okay, but you can see when you're switching between full screen and uh, not full screen, it's lagging pretty hard. But I want to go over um, some of the benchmarks for this computer because they're interesting. Um, and they're basically just absolutely abysmal. <laughs> um, but obviously benchmarking is not something that this CPU was designed for. Um, but I'm going to go over them anyways. So if we do just the basic CPU-Z benchmark um, on CPU-Z, um, the single core score was 10.4. And the multi-core score was 141.8. Um, let's give a comparison for that. I had an older laptop from about 2012 running a Celeron chip. So it's probably a 2012, 2013, maybe even 2011 Celeron chip. I don't have the laptop with me right now, so I don't know the exact chip, but it's an older Celeron laptop. Its single score was 150, and its multi was 250. So it got a single core score of 140 higher, and it got a multi-core score of over 100 higher, and it's that much older. Now, obviously, the Celeron chip operates differently than the ARM chip, so it's hard to really say uh, for basic computing if it's technically better or worse. Now, if we do the CPU uh, benchmark from cpu.userbenchmark.com, the uh, Snapdragon uh, ARM chip got a 37.6% score, and the Celeron got a 34.3% score. So a little bit higher, but uh, obviously, running in the 30s is significantly lower than a lot of other computers nowadays, um, so both of these are pretty slow, but I guess if all you're doing is working on Microsoft Word or just looking at or just reading articles online, it, it functions, I guess. Um, I also did an OpenGL fish tank test, and it lagged pretty horribly throughout the test, and the computer completely crashed, and I had to reboot it when I did the 10,000 and 15,000 fish test. Everything else aside, the biggest issue I have with this computer, and why I would not recommend it, is the support. Um, ARM chips still are not really supported on Windows yet. Um, basically, what I would call an ARM chip on Windows is a half-baked version of Windows. Um, and we're going to go into that a little bit later when I talk about who this computer is for. Now, on the support side, I have to give this computer an F because, like I said, ARM is not fully supported for Windows yet, and it's not really ready. Um, ARM has to emulate most applications not found in the Microsoft Store, and they don't always run correctly. And even CPU-Z, which basically just lists the specs of your computer, and you can run basic benchmarks, um, the text on the application looked blurrier than the surrounding text, te text on the desktop, and I assume it's blurry because it's emulating the program. And on top of that, many applications for Windows just won't work at all 
because they're not developed to support ARM. Therefore, they will either just not install at all, or if you try and open them after they install, they will just say error and then not open. Now, two applications that I tested uh, for this computer, they're both 64-bit apps. Um, one was CPU-Z and the other was CPU Core Temp. Uh, CPU-Z, like I said, it would run, but every time I opened it, it would have an error prompt pop up. But if you just closed out the error prompt, the program would run. So that's nice at least, but it was still, the text was still blurry for some reason, I guess, because it was emulating it. And then the CPU Core Temp uh, program just didn't open at all. And it would just say error and it would close. So CPU Core Temp didn't work at all. I also tried Sony Vegas and um, I don't know if it installed or not, but either way, I couldn't get Sony Vegas to work on this computer. Not that you would really be editing videos on this computer, but I just wanted to see if it would run Sony Vegas or open it at all. Now, I heard rumors that Windows 11 provides better emulation for 32 and 64-bit applications, um, but given the speed of this computer, I didn't upgrade it to Windows 11 because Windows 11 has a tendency at this point in time to be slower than Windows 10, and given the fact that this computer wasn't blowing my mind with its speed, I really didn't want to make it any more difficult for this computer. Now, another issue, and I only realized this issue when I started using the computer a little bit, I was doing some research on uh, processors and I was just reading through articles. I had the computer on my lap and I ran into some heating issues. The laptop overheated on me after about 30 minutes of just reading articles online. And the second time happened only five minutes later after I rebooted it when I was reading the same articles. So that kind of confirmed in my mind that it was in fact an overheating issue and not just the computer crashing for some reason. Now, apparently I was looking into this. I'm like, why is this thing overheating? It shouldn't be overheating. Uh, but apparently it's recommended for only flat surface use to minimize the heat buildup, which to me defeats the purpose of it being called a laptop, but whatever. So I guess if you're using this thing, you have to make sure that you're on a flat surface table. And if you need to use it on the go, make sure you carry an entire table with you so you can set it on something. So now let's talk about who this computer is made for. And I would just recommend altogether you don't buy this computer because there's better options out there, and this option just gives you a half-baked Windows experience. So if you're already a Windows consumer and you buy Windows uh, laptops or desktops or whatever, and you're very familiar with Windows, this is not going to be something that you would really like. Because if you have an application that you want to use, it may or may not even be supported, and it may or may not even run very well. Um, so if you're very used to Windows, even if, you, even if you've only bought lower-end Windows laptops in the past you're not really going to enjoy this computer very much at all because you're going to be very limited on the applications that you can run. So if you're looking for a budget laptop that isn't going to break the bank and come in between like three and four hundred dollars, I would just recommend finding a brand new laptop out there because they sell them with an i3 10th or 11th gen for about 300 to 400 dollars and that'll get you a lot more bang for your buck because all of your applications will be supported they may not run as well as uh, compared to like an i5 or an i7 but at least you can install them and run them um, and also if you don't mind buying used you can find even better deals out there you can find uh, older 8th gen i5s uh, older i7s on laptops for about 300 to 400 bucks, which are going to outperform the brand new i3s. So there's a lot of good options out there that you can find, whether you want to buy in the new market or you don't mind stepping out of maybe your comfort zone and buying some used things. Now, this laptop is designed for the typical student who just needs Microsoft Office and basic internet browsing. Um, and that's true, I guess. This would be a fine choice for those purposes. But with the used laptop choices on the market, Chromebooks, and other low-end Intel options available, I just don't really see this as a good option for really any student. Because if a student needs to install a program, it probably will not even be uh, supported. So I would say that this doesn't even line up for students. And I was thinking about it for a little bit, and I finally figured out who this laptop would be for. Because I was thinking, I'm like, well, I have this laptop now. What am I going to do with it? Because I don't want to use it. Because a lot of things I want to use it for, I probably won't be able to use it for. And it also strains my eyes. So I really don't want to use it. So I was thinking about it. And I'm like, you know who this would be very good for? Older people. Because I was like, I could give this thing to my mom. <laughs> because my mom really doesn't have any Windows experience. And she's not going to be downloading any applications for this. And she'll just use it for the web browsing feature. That would be perfect. 
Um, so basically, I would say if you're a student, stay away from this thing. But maybe if you have older parents, grandparents or something, and you, they want like a cheap laptop, this would be something that they could probably use. And that's basically it. Just given where ARM is right now with Windows, I just wouldn't really recommend it. So to sum this laptop up, I would say it nails the presentation. Um, it looks really good. You could easily mistake it for a much higher end laptop. Um, the keyboard is pretty solid and the presentation is very good. But the issue occurs when you actually start using the thing. Like I said, the screen isn't very good, but it's pretty much on par with all lower end laptops nowadays. And the support for the processor and the support for Windows of ARM chips just really isn't there right now. In the future, it might be. In the future, it might be a lot better. But for right now, uh, I think the sweet spot for ARM is running Android. If you're going to buy a little tiny Android PC that's running ARM, that's going to run very well. But for using Windows, it's just, it doesn't work right now. It's a half-baked experience that just isn't going to end well. Because even if you don't think you're going to run into issues with support, you very well might run into run into them a lot quicker than you're thinking. Because if you need to install a program and you're not able to install and run it, then boom, the laptop suddenly becomes something that you can't use. And if you want a half-baked Windows experience, go ahead and buy a Chromebook. Chromebooks are better supported than this thing is. So I don't know. I just really wouldn't recommend this computer for anyone. Um, I would say just stick with uh, a lower-end laptop that rocks an i3 processor or even just look on the second-hand market and get a used laptop that has a much better screen and a much better processor and much better Windows support for only about $300 to $400. Like I said, I got this laptop for $180 and, you know, even if it was free, I, I wouldn't really have a use for it. It wouldn't satisfy my needs in a laptop. Anyways, that basically wraps up the video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you were on the fence and you were thinking about buying this computer, hopefully I helped you decide. Um, let me know if you actually already have an ARM-based uh, processor in your laptop and let me know how the experience has been for you. Um, anyways, I'll see you in the next video.